So let's talk about camera settings. I have a fairly default setup, 35 millimeter. That is all. Let's just press render and I'll show you what we've got. Fairly straightforward, nothing flash. Let's change some settings. Back into our view, I'm going to enable depth of field, select our focus on object and we'll focus on this speeder here and we'll leave the F stop for now. So let's do a render and show you. And if we flick between, we can see that we just have a little bit of blur around the back. But if we come back into our scene and change the f-stop to maybe one, let's press F12 again. We can now see this speeder in the background is a little bit blurred and also even this bit here. So if we cycle through our original and then our 2.8 depth of field and then our one, you can see a big difference. Having such a strong depth of field really makes me focus my eye into the center. One other thing that we can do in this view while we're here is we can go up to type of the camera lens, change it to panoramic, and we can give it a fish eye equal soy. And if we were to press F12 on that one, we can see that flicking between, we've kind of got a true lens here. So for instance, we know that in the scene that this is actually a straight line, but using the fish eyed lens, we can see it's sphered. If we look at the original, it is a straight line. So if you want to give yourself a little bit more of effect, there's another option. However, there are some other effects that we can do. Now, for instance, we have this little ship on the table. I'm going to change the focal length to about 100 and we'll change our focus object to this speeder. And with GZZ, we can move in and now f-stop is very low at the moment. So let's maybe bring that back up to 2.8 just so we get more of this ship. And if we press F12, we can see now that it does very much look like a toy. What's the difference between having a 100 mil and a 35 mil, for instance? Let's change the focal length, 35, and we'll go G, Z, Z, bring it in. We kind of just get this off effect. It just kind of, to me, it just doesn't seem right. Maybe the f-stop's a little bit too high, so we can bring that back down. So let's now double the f-stop to probably about five, f12. And if we cycle between the two, we do have a little bit more detail, but once again, it doesn't look right. Obviously with the camera so close to the object and having that depth of field, just doesn't seem to work. Where we, if we pop back to this view, it works quite nicely. Now for the last little tip, we can make our own HDRI. If we go from type perspective on the camera to panoramic, fisheye equals soil there. We go to equilateral. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Alt R to reset the rotation, rotate X 90 degrees. And then we can put our ship back in place. Now you have to remember that we are rendering a 360 degree image. We actually are gonna to have to increase our resolution. We could probably increase it to 4K. So I'm just gonna times it by two times by two. I reckon we could probably even go higher, but for now, let's just do that and F12. And I stuffed up there. I forgot to turn off depth of field. So make sure we turn that off when we're doing a HDRI and F12. And if we zoom out, we can see that we have the full 360 degree. However, let's now just go file, save as, and I'm just gonna dump it here for now. Let's come into a new blend file. Up at the top, we go shading. Let's select everything and delete. I'm gonna come over into rendered view and let's leave it for Eevee for now. Go to object world, shift A to search, environment texture. And we'll plug that in there bright pink and that's because there is no texture at the moment so let's go open find our texture that we just saved and now in our 3d environment we have created a 360 image as our world now obviously it's a little bit low quality we probably should bump it up a bit more let's actually do that and you can see that it is much clearer